that causes a $15.6 trillion hole in the market where uh, millennials are not contributing or not invested because they simply don't know how or why they should. And, you know, we want to make a better world for all of us. It may sound lofty, but I really think that this is something that is achievable. For Monday, August 26th, 2019, this is episode 47, the new wave of financial literacy. Zippy CEO Christine Concepcion. Schools are more likely to teach you hot cross buns on the recorder than what a rate cut or Roth IRA is. With one in five students lacking basic financial literacy skills, it's clear that current methods are not working. Zippy CEO Christine Concepcion and her co-founders teamed up to create a better way to educate people about their finances. Money is poorly understood and an uncomfortable topic for many, but what's worse is that it's disproportionately hurting women and minorities who also earn less. Ultimately, ignorance is bad for our entire economy. Here's my chat with Christine about her startup Zippy that aims to fix financial literacy with a social media focused marketing strategy. With Trinity Audio, you can turn your blog readers into listeners by turning your written content into lifelike speech. Trinity Audio lets you audiofy your entire website for free. Visit trinityaudio.ai to learn more. Welcome to the Beatle Moment Marketing Podcast, a short weekly exploration of marketing, technology, and career. I'm Emily Bender. I answer to no one, and I make this for you. Let's get on with the show. Hi, this is Emily Bender. I'm here with a super special guest, my friend, Christine Concepcion. Christine is a New York native and former financier turned fintech entrepreneur. She is the co-founder of Zippy. Hey, Christine, how are you? Hi, good morning, Emily. So excited to get you on the show because you and I were in New York a few weeks ago and you were telling me about all the exciting things going on with your company, Zippy, which is X-I-P-I. And I thought I'd love to get you on here and just Tell us everything about your background and then how you ended up founding this company and why. Yeah, so um, a little bit about me. I am from the South Bronx, and uh, South Bronx is one of the most impoverished neighborhoods in the United States, Um, certainly when I was growing up there and still, unfortunately, today. So experiencing poverty at a young age um, had a pretty profound effect on me. And I knew that the only way out of, you know, my situation for a better life would be through a path of education. So I made it my my personal project at a very young age to pursue education as much as I could. Um, I went to Columbia for undergrad, and then I went back to Columbia Business School uh, for my MBA, just graduated this past May. While I was there, I realized that, you know, a lot of people are not going to have as much good fortune and opportunity as I have had, and education should be something ubiquitous that everyone should have access to. Specifically, financial education is something that almost no schools teach, and it really hurts all of us. Um, We are the sum of, you know, our lowest common denominator and I I met my co-founder at uh, CBS, and it was something, Brian Lang, he's absolutely amazing, (laughs) Um, and it was something that we discussed at length, thinking about how to get financial literacy out to people who need it the most and in a fun way that is not boring. Right. It's not boring. If any of you have even checked already, uh, get Zippy. That's G-E-T-X-I-P-I on Instagram. It's it's certainly anything but boring. I, I've even shared this with friends and just said, take a look at this account, like the branding, the tone. It's so accessible. It's so fun. And it, it actually will crack you up. And you guys are doing an amazing job with that. But so so what is your goal with what you're doing um, with Instagram strategy? And then ultimately, like, when you launch, what will it look like? 
Yeah, so right now um, we just have our social media pages running. We are working around the clock, <laughs> day and night, um, for our beta launch. We expect the beta launch to be in the first week in November. Uh, the exact date is is not yet available, but certainly it will be posted to our social media when we have it. Um, so for the beta launch in November, um, we will be having a platform where people can learn finance through very short micro lessons. So each lesson would be five minutes or less and each tailored to the specific need of that particular person. So some people learn better by reading, some people learn better with video content. Um, at a later date, not for the beta launch, but there probably will be a voice component um, as some people are better suited to learning through hearing. And uh, we're just trying to make things, and also games, I'm sorry. Games is a huge component of what we're doing. So we're gamifying learning finance and using language that um, is accessible to everyone. Uh, you don't need to have an MBA to get basic financial proficiency. And um, we are really excited. <laughs> That's so great. And I, I don't know of anyone else doing anything like this. I haven't seen it. And I haven't seen it done in such a fun, enthusiastic, just kind of maverick way, which is something I'm always attracted to. I think, you know, if we look at the stats, and you mentioned our economy, the lowest common denominator, 100%. So I've read that about 40% of people with low levels of financial literacy rely on parents, friends, acquaintances as their most important source of financial knowledge. But if we're not teaching it in schools and some people don't have parents or friends that know anything about it, where are we learning this? And then you have people that don't have $400 for an emergency. Yeah. So it's a staggering stat that 40% of Americans uh, do not have $400 accessible to them if they were to have like a car breakdown or, you know, someone becomes sick. And what these people do generally is they rely on things like payday loans, which is basically loan sharking. Um, and it puts them in an even more grave situation as they typically are not able to pay the payday loans um, in a timely fashion. And those have extraordinary, extraordinary interest rates. Um, but, you know, and there's a lot of things that happen, especially in, in the term in terms of social media, where we look and we covet other people's lives, which is something that Zippy is very focused on. Not I don't want to say exposing, but perhaps exposing is the word <laughs> um, is that you see your friends living their best life on Instagram. And what you don't see is that. 70% of young adults are receiving some type of financial support from their parents. Uh, wow. Yes. So it is, and, and when we say young adults, we mean people under 30. You certainly would think that somebody 25, 26 would be on their own, but the way that things are and, you know, millennials and Gen Z are making far less than their parents ever did. And, um, and so they need help and they're getting help in a variety of ways, whether that is mom and dad picking up the credit card bill or mom and dad helping out with rent. Um, and we want to make sure that people don't feel ashamed about these things, but also are, are really aware that they aren't the only ones struggling and we should be talking about money because this shame that clouds money is part of the reason that we perpetuate a cycle where we are not financially literate. In our research, we found that um, certain demographics are 76% uh, financially illiterate. And this would be anybody under 35, from um, 18 to 35. So again, that's something that is not acceptable. Um, that causes a $15.6 trillion hole in the market where uh, millennials are not contributing or not invested because they simply don't know how or why they should. And, you know, we want to make a better world for all of us. It may sound lofty, but I really think that this is something that is achievable and it's going to take a lot more players than just Zippy. But if we're going to be, you know, one of the main players, then bring it on. 
How many times have you wanted to keep reading an article or blog post, but you had to focus your eyes on a task like driving? If this has happened to you, it's happened to your audience. Spoken word is becoming an expected option for everything from news to books to blog posts. Voice is the most convenient way to consume content. In a matter of months, it will become inconceivable for publishers and content creators to offer an experience of reading alone. Just as offering print only is a thing of the past, now text only is an outdated digital experience. Anyone with a website that isn't thinking about this is asleep at the wheel. With Trinity Audio, publishers and bloggers can turn their readers to listeners by turning their written content into lifelike speech. Using Trinity Audio's Contech, that's content technology solution, you can engage your audience wherever they are, at the gym, driving, at their desk, doing house chores, anywhere. Trinity Audio helps publishers and bloggers join the audio revolution by audiofying their entire website for free. Visit trinityaudio.ai to learn more. I've implemented Trinity Audio on my blog on beetlemoment.com, and it's a great tool. Visit trinityaudio.ai to get started. You know, it's funny, Christine, I haven't mentioned this to you before, but I was talking with, I think, one of my clients or colleague, and I said, oh, my friend Christine has this financial literacy, literacy startup. Go check it out. Their Instagram's hilarious, and they're really trying to make a difference. And this person said to me, you know, there's no money in financial literacy. They're not going to make any money. Like that's not, that's not the one to go after if you're after, I guess, like a big exit or something. Well, you know, everyone is entitled to their opinions as sometimes doing good in the world is, is better than making money, but we certainly are a C corp, not a B corp. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I don't, I, I would respectfully disagree with that statement. Uh, there are a lot of socially driven companies um, that are not only doing tremendous good work in the world, uh, they're making a lot of money. So. <laughs> right. I think there's money to be made in doing good. And if you look at the success of a lot of brands, especially like the direct to consumer players that have come on the market that have transparency or that have a layer of social responsibility or philanthropy, people yeah. eat that up. Millennials eat that up. I mean, yes. that's the way to go. Absolutely. And, you know, the tide is changing. Um, you know, BlackRock, uh, their CEO every single year for the last few years has issued letters where BlackRock will only be invested in companies that are doing social good or at least being socially responsible, right? Um, so there, there is the old tide and the new tide, and uh, we're the new tide. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, the new tide. I have to, I have to read this out. This is one of my favorite Instagram posts that you guys put out there. It says finding out Bay isn't financially stable is worse than finding out their texts turn green. Yes. Yeah. So, it, yeah, just having that fun tone of voice and just making something different and new is the new guard. And the amazing thing about it is, like, this is it's so democratized. You can you can get this information out there in a new way. So hopefully, more people can get educated and literate, so that we don't have this giant hole in our economy. And you know, I think it hurts women in more than anybody. If you look at 29% of working women demonstrated basic financial literacy versus 47% of working men. That was from the Global Financial Literacy Excellence Center. And like that's a staggering statistic. Women with yeah. money, like we're already getting paid less and we don't know how to manage our money. Yeah, I know. It's insult to injury, isn't right, it? Right, right. Oh. Uh, and you know what's more, what's very interesting about that stat is that 11% um, I should say there are out of all the people who have among millennials who have degrees, 11% more of women have degrees than men. So we should, in theory, be better equipped to have these higher paying jobs and have more financial stability. But when you look at the student debt, two thirds of the student debt out there is held by women. So <laughs> It's, you know, we just have to make changes and then you could even go further down the rabbit hole where people of color have uh, fewer resources and access to education as a whole. It's certainly financial literacy, um, uh, LGBTQIA youth have less access to financial literacy. And so we just keep creating this snowball effect. And 
I, I should add that, you know, Zippy is not the only financial literacy um, tool available. There are actually are very many that there's, there's ton. Um, I'm not going to name any names. So I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, but the other ones that exist are in the old school way, right? It, there's, there's somebody on a, on a chalkboard and they're going to put up this, you know, a uh, huge formula and it's just somebody talking at you rather than having conversation and using language that is accessible to you. Um, if you are a younger person, if you are a person who has traditionally lived in a more impoverished neighborhood, but it's, it's not just, it's, I mean, I, I just to make it clear is we, this is not just um, charity, right? We really do believe that doing this is something that is necessary for everybody, even people with the, the MBAs. So all the way from, from a high school student to somebody who possibly could have their PhD, right? It's, it's for everybody. It's just, it's just fun. It's, it's just, um, it's quick. And it's something to think about each day. You know, you see a lot of these apps where it's like a word of the day and you just, you learn something quick for that day and why not, right? Um, so that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. So you have a theme called WTF Wednesday and yeah. WTF is a rate cut. Yeah. People don't really understand what that. You hear it thrown around on the news. You're not quite sure unless you're actually in the financial world. So I think that's great. I mean, let's learn vocabulary in more than one way. Right, right, right. That's awesome. So with this with this product, with this literacy education tool, how how are you going to drive revenue? Is it going to be ad supported or? So we will for the first year and I, and I say the first year um, when we have a full launch. So again, we have the beta launch coming in November. That will be invitation only um, for the most part, uh, just because we will not be able to support everybody on the platform at once. We're trying to get the kinks out, but um in the spring of 2020 will be the full launch where Zippy will be available to everyone and anybody who would like to access the platform. Um, for the first year, it would be completely free. Um, after the first year, it will work on a freemium model um, in that if you would like to have access to content without advertisements um, coming in, in between your lesson, much in the way that a lot of games are are done now, uh, you could pay a subscription fee and have all the ads removed from the platform. Um, some people don't mind the ads, you know, they're happy to just get something for free. So we got them covered. Some people hate the ads. So, you know, if they want to pay a small fee to have the ads removed, then certainly we have that available. And then there will also be like a la carte services. So if you would just like one particular lesson, um, in a, in a specific area, let's say capital markets, and and you really want to hone in on that, you could just buy that lesson instead of getting on a monthly subscription service. Oh, that's perfect. I, I feel like people are willing to pay for good content. Some people, this is why Facebook is successful. They don't mind. They'll look at ads. But yeah, that model makes a lot of sense. So I think also this would be really interesting to have a voice component. Like if you had an Alexa skill or something similar to that with the daily tips, that would be really powerful. I think people would, and if you had your tone of voice inserted, like if it was a flash briefing or something, people would eat that up. Yeah. You know, I, that's something that we definitely want to get into. Uh, we realize that people are using their voice devices uh, more and more, I definitely use my Alexa. Um, she's my best friend. <laughs> Aside from Athena. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Athena, Athena's my, my doggy best friend, but Alexa is my favorite um, technology friend. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's definitely something that we want to get into in being able to provide content um, through Alexa or other um, voice activated devices for sure. Definitely. Well, this has been great. Thank you so much, Christine. Let people know where they can connect with you and Zippy. Yeah, so you can find us. We're most active on Instagram, um, but we have pages up on Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter. And for all of those, the handle is the same. It's at 
get X I P I. Fantastic. Thanks, Christine. Talk with you later. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye. Hey, do you have an Amazon Echo device? Then you have to take advantage of Flash Briefing, the short daily news offering on Alexa. It's free and easy to set up. You can catch my daily briefing, the voice marketing flash briefing, Daily Beetle Moment, by going to bit.ly slash beetle flash. That's B-I-T dot L-Y slash B-E-E-T-L-E flash, all lowercase. Or just search Amazon or your Alexa app for Beetle Moment Voice Marketing. My goal with this flash briefing is to fracture Alexa's rubric. Come check it out. For more about the show or to consult with me, visit BeetleMoment.com. Tweet me at Emily Bender. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week.